application that I submitted and shared with Oleg and you and other members of uh, Mantras for uh, Google Citizen of Docs uh, team. Uh, I uh, also was trying to, uh, well, first of all, understand uh, uh, following discussion how our terminology is related to URLs because this is not, well, completely clear to me. For instance, if, uh, well, in case if we adopt complex term for master, let's say Jenkins server, how uh, URLs will be dependent on this. Uh, this is something that, well, I don't understand and would be interested in understanding more. Um, Can you describe a little further the, the places where you you have a question so i'm trying to understand so do you mean urls as in how do we refer to a url textually tell me more well it was a uh, part of our uh, threaded discussion in uh, git channel for documentation when we discussed about different terms for master for instance mm -hmm. and there was proposals to use or something like Jenkins server, for instance, as re a replacement for, for the master term. And there was uh, uh, not objection, but uh, somebody mentioned it would mean that there will be complex term in URL, like Jenkins server, and this complexity is not uh, easily implemented. Uh, in the current infrastructure, I guess. And this is something that I don't quite understand. And it would be interested to like understand mm -hmm. how terminology is mapped and why it is mapped to URLs. Okay, oh. valid. Yeah, so, so in, in that particular case, I think the concern was related to the ambiguity of the word server because oftentimes we, we refer to server as the computer hosting the process, or we might use server as the Kubernetes cluster hosting the process, or we might use server as the Docker process hosting or Docker container hosting the process. And, and those, those, are the, those are relatively common uses of the word server in that case. And therefore saying Jenkins server becomes um, the way the way and I think the respondent there was James Nord the way he described it was hey that's quite ambiguous it's not clear what mm -hmm. this thing is and so now we have to put a lot of extra words into every time we use the phrase Jenkins server because we're we would say Jenkins server and by this we mean the Jenkins process or Jenkins server and by this we mean the host name of the computer hosting the Jenkins process or Jenkins server, and by this we mean the Java, the Java executable that's running. The, you know, th therefore his his concern was, hey, that's just not precise enough. Mm -hmm. And and one of the one of the the what I think is a, a a cool and a very positive idea from the terminology discussions is, what if we what if as part of this made our terminology more exact, more precise? So Daniel Beck noted that if instead we consider two different contexts one context is the thing that we called master which was the jenkins process executing somewhere and the other thing that we called master is the node that is automatically allocated by jenkins on the root um, server so the the root node is called the master node and daniel's note was those are two different concepts and we don't want people using the master node to execute much. We, we guide them specifically, do, do work on agents, not on the master node. But when we need to refer to the, the, the top level process, we call it the master process, or we just call it the master. And so in both cases, it's a good chase, chance to drop the word master and replace it with something more precise. Mm -hmm. Thanks for clarifying. Mm -hmm. And I would vote for more precision in terminology. I've got a few more candidates. I think this is a good trend. Yeah, and, and it, it's clarity. Clarity has helped, right? Particularly mm -hmm. 
particularly for 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 instance for non-native speakers yes um, when we use ambiguous terms it, it makes it even more difficult for someone to comprehend as they're go crossing the language barrier as they're tr making the transformation from english to whatever their 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 common language is so yes so the chinese i don't know how they deal with some of our phrasal verbs i don't know how they mm -hmm. ever ever handle the fact that we we speak so freely we use the word get so often with um an extra word over under get by get through and each one of those is an entirely different verb so right. so yes there are lots of lots of places like that where we we can be much more precise and benefit not just not just the local language people, but everybody with more precision. Did did that answer it, Vlad? Is that yes, absolutely. Okay. I, now, now you you mentioned earlier that you had shared your proposal only with the admins, and I think one of the one of the goals had been to encourage people to share it publicly so others can see it. Was it intentional that you only shared it with a narrow set of people rather than making it publicly visible? Or is it publicly visible? Uh, well, I no, I don't think it is publicly visible. Uh, I followed advice from Oleg oh, good. Asif, okay. to uh, dump it into uh, Google Docs versus mm -hmm. Forms. And so now it is in Google Docs and I just shared with a like, yeah, uh, uh, what the, uh, with the team which is mentioned on our side as mentors and org admins. Great. I guess we are included also. But yeah, just main intention is to get some reviews, comments, and just suggestions to start discussion on this or to continue. Excellent. Uh, okay. Yeah. I also well, wanted to mention. Uh, in case this forum is appropriate, a uh, couple uh, weeks ago during similar office hours, you introduced the spreadsheet, which you put up together some time ago about different feedbacks to our issues uh, in documentation. And there was a long list of different issues. And um, I put together the two. Uh, to transform these issues from the spreadsheet into the GitHub, uh, which is using uh, not API, but Hub, something that you shared also. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, well, and I'm just trying to test this and not sure if, uh, does it make sense to continue working on this? Is it advisable to, uh, create the tool which will batch create the entire list of issues. So uh, I would avoid batch creating them because many of those feedback items have long ago been been addressed. So if you batch create an issue for something that was reported a year ago on one of the tutorials, as an example, um, mm -hmm. we saw that feedback, we acted on the feedback, we corrected the problem, so now if you raise an issue in GitHub with a tool, with a, a script, we will just go in and fairly quickly then close it out and be annoyed that you raised an issue that was already resolved. Now, if, if the tool helps someone to say, hey, I've looked at this and I want to submit this particular row as an issue, <laughs> that, that might be quite interesting then. Uh, and uh, good evening. And there I, is uh, another problem with that sheet because uh, some users use a bad vocabulary, uh, let's say. Yes. That, 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 <laughs> it's not so beautiful. Beautiful is, is a very polite term for it. Some of <laughs> yeah. the, some of the, some of the uh, comments are laced with profanity and I would, I would close them instantaneously if I saw them in a GitHub issue because, yeah. well, because as much as, as much as we talked earlier about the master-slave terminology potentially offending others, I'm personally quite offended by certain English words that are used commonly in places where I, I find them disconcerting, right? So yeah. profanity okay. is not acceptable to me, and therefore I get involved very quickly on things like that. Maybe I overreact, but it's one of those where I get offended by, by profane language in, in, my, in my tongue. So... 
so yes, definitely. If someone if someone uh, drops the f bomb in a uh, or make uses uses a profane word in in a bug report, I will do all sort take all sorts of steps to fix that, including asking to ban them, those sorts of things. It's just it's not acceptable. The community is very yeah. gracious uh, in terms of its its style of communication, its conversation, and the the uh, the contributor covenant actually covers that kind of thing. So we can expect each other to be to be politely phrased. Sometimes you're right, Jonathan. The the feedback comments are not politely phrased. They are not. <laughs> they're, they're they're filled with things that they shouldn't be. And so we, we intentionally discard or change them. Now, now, Jonathan, I believe you had done some processing of that sheet as well. Did you want to share some of the things that you had learned as you had gone through it? Because uh, it's glad, good that both of you have been looking at that. That's a great way for us to find out what, what users are thinking. Do you want to share, yeah. share more about what you had learned? Yeah. Uh, I. I, yesterday, I, I shared my proposal at the group, our groups too, and there I put the links to a dashboard that I import all feedbacks. So in that dashboard, uh, we can see by category each one, unhelpful, healthy, uh, and, and medial evaluations. And uh, in the most of case, uh, the user is asking for samples. Yeah. Uh, video samples and for more uh, more elaborate uh, expl uh, explanations about how to use the comments or uh, to resolve some ambi uh, ambiguous uh, terms like you said about the server one and uh, in, in a big picture it's about that more samples videos and, and uh, tutorials to help them to understand how the feature works. Thank you. Would you be willing to share? Do you have the? Is the dashboard available that you'd be willing to share? Share the yeah. screen and show it to us. I think oh. I think it'd be elegant to have a, a tour of it. I'm going to let you share. Oh, let me. I not have that open. Just a moment. Because I thought it was an interesting idea, but the concept that we might get, for instance, I think you had done some data analysis to see what portion of the of the feedback was not helpful versus somewhat helpful versus, uh, and I forget even the yeah. terms, but but there's there's data there that I think would be good for us to see and consider. Yeah, it's very helpful seeing in the uh, all in dashboard because you can use filters to show exactly how you want to see. Just a moment, it's open. And just uh, push the button share screen. Mm -hmm. Right. And it should, if you've got a multi-screen environment, it will ask you which of your screens you want to share. And you have okay. to use a thumbnail to choose which one. Yeah, so I see well, this. Yep, great. You're seeing? Uh -huh. uh, yes. yes. Okay, so can you describe the general areas of the page for us? And, yeah. And some of the things that you learned while you were doing the analysis? Okay, uh, the first one here, uh, it's a, a count about the page that uh, receive more requests for help or more feedbacks, okay? So pipeline build steps, it's the winner with uh, uh, 18 sixth. So 10%, 10 of the requests for, were for one page and if no, we look it's at the not top... about percent percents. It's about uh, units. Well, but... uh, we have a, a, a all these requests. Yeah, you're right. It's percents. 
it's well I, I, I was just i was just fascinated to see that if we take just the top five that you've listed there we've already covered about 20 percent of the of the feedback yeah on five pages so yeah. great there yeah. is another point too uh, it's about one kind of feedbacks from users they they not like to long pages with documentations uh, they prefer small sections okay because uh, we not we don't have a search bar so it's not so easy find things in, in long text yeah uh, okay one do, and uh, one of my proposal is uh, find a solution for a search bar in a week to help them so uh, the most uh, you can click here to apply a filter about the not that helpful questions. It's our count here. And uh, every change here, when I, I select this option, you can see here to a, just a point. So here we can see all the suggestions, uh, requests, yeah? provide the full, uh, it's the full options for each field, provide uh, re which kind of returns and the, the on, move on. Here we can see um, a time frame, which a, a period receive more and low requests. So our more activity, it, it was this month, April 19, and uh, that space here. And you can, for example, click on them. Just a moment, you can see which requests. So I saw it on the step gauge, Indicate Git supports uh, HTTP or SSH, SSH. That's it. Yeah, you need to uh, waste some time here to read uh, each uh, evaluation about the users. No? You can use the filter to get the most important one. So you can click here, 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 and here and get the top five requests for users and work on it. So for example, .NET sample, uh, all the sample here, it's the feedback asking. Maybe, maybe we can find it, bad words here. <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> will and that's, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's a open one. Uh, I put the password and user to, you can, uh, access the dashboard and use for you own use. I have no problem. It's open. Excellent. Thank very you. Very nice. Thanks very much, Jonathan. Yeah, that's that's quite. So so it looks like there are some high high frequency areas, and they seem to be okay. Pipeline build step. So so pipeline, um, two, three three of the tours. Uh, yeah. and, that, and that truly am amazes me because three of those, I'll have to double check, but I think those three tours are now all functioning, but, mm -hmm. but they were still high feedback points. A and then yeah. the Git plugin, okay, I've, I've tried my very best to fix that one. So the, the, that was one that was laced with profanity. Absolutely. There are lots of, <laughs> lots of things where people said, I want this. I'm, give me examples. Give me. And so I wrote examples and they've been posted and, and they're now part of the documentation. Now, actually, for my benefit, could you zoom in on Git? I'd like to see if you look at the timeline on feedback on the Git page. Feedback on the feed page. Just a moment. Yeah, so page, this one? That one, exactly. So when you when you click that row and hit the and hit the green check yeah. mark, that narrows the narrows the result. 
Yeah, yeah, and there was the result. Okay, and there. so what, what that shows is the rate of feedback over time has decreased compared to, so we were getting, it looks like, two or three per time period for, for quite a while, and for the mm -hmm. last four or five months, we've been down to one, except for one time when we got two. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and uh, our AVG, it's uh, about two uh, feedbacks per month. Okay. So now, can we, see, and you can see the individual suggestions? Yeah, it's here. You just open here. Uh, we have uh, two fields about the uh, suggestions. It, it, it's all, all here. More descriptions. It's uh, like the same. Excellent. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, I have a generic another, question. Oh, go ahead, Hunter. Uh, another important point. Uh, I, I believe that our docs, it's right and for more experienced uh, users. So we need to write in, in a new way to embrace the new ones. For example, it's a, here, it's a, a exactly example, good example. For a beginner, would be good if they're at least small samples. Maybe because we have a lot of experience in our career, it's easy to read and understand uh, the topics or the main concept about the technology about the jenks okay maybe we need more beginner samples maybe good thank you meg you had a question i believe go ahead yes um i was just curious these i remember when we put in the ability to add feedback do we ever respond to those so that if there's a comment in there and then we go in and change the stuff, do we make a comment that we, we think we this really, has been fixed? We really can't because the, okay. the sheet is write only. Um, so the, the process that maintains the sheet appends to the sheet and no one but that process has permission to write to the sheet. And okay. we don't, we, we intentionally do not show the contents of the sheet to anyone because, because the content is completely unfiltered and has no safeguards on it right so it could okay be, so if anybody posting a comment does not know what other comments have been posted to that is site. correct right they there is no hint there's no no maintained public display of the contents for comments for a specific page other than in this sheet okay. so the the sheet itself there and there's no and i think i think that's a healthy thing because i don't really want jenkins.io to become stack overflow the site or you know, right. a, a, a moderated chat system. That's not what it's for. It's, I agree. It's a documentation maybe it's, site. Maybe it's something in the back end, though. It would be, as I can see, like five years from now, the comments that were received and are no longer relevant are going to show on the same list. We don't have a way to filter out that these, and, are, like, even internally. That is correct. But I think, I think long term, and it's already the transition has already actively started. Long term, we will switch more and more people to give us github issue reports for their for their problems with a page rather than submitting to this feedback so um jonathan i'm going to stop your sharing and i'm going to bring up okay bring up the share of mine so that we can look at, at what one of the pages look like and see the, the 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 different ways that people can give feedback okay so do you see my screen that that yes. has a pretty background the Jenkins yes. page. Yes. Okay, great. All right. So on these pages now, so let's go to, let's see, it was pipeline built steps, wasn't it? Was the high, yes. high, high noise page. So let's see if we can find pipeline build steps. There it is in all its glory. Oh, where is it? Let's see. So pipeline. Yes, search bar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Build steps. <laughs> Uh, actually, and it may be that I have to go here. Oh, under resources, there's a link to steps reference. I think that's it. Down at the bottom ah, on the left. There we go. Yes. Is this well, but Jonathan, could you look it up again for us? Tell us what the page was that was the most 
was it wasn't steps i think it was it was a pipeline build steps build okay so pipeline build so let's steps. okay so oh so i am showing clearly that Okay. Uh, I will put the, the link to you in our Oh, share. that'd be great. Thank you. Just a moment. Here. It's the most requested one. Okay. And it should be in my chat system, which I can find shortly. Where is the chat? Uh, uh, at the bottom. A has I icon. Middle bottom. Yeah, so I think I have to stop share so I can find it there. Oh. Okay, all right. There we go. Now I got it. Oh yes, yes. Okay, and this one, this one is a is is a good one to give feedback on. Be well, yeah. Let's okay. Let's. I'll bring it back. Sharing coming soon. Just a minute. So share screen. Share this screen. Go. Okay, so you should see pipeline build step yeah okay so and the elegant and really positive thing here is that this page is assembled from a whole whole set of from the entire pool of jenkins plugins that contribute to this step so so what we see is things like list get branches which is completely unrelated to matrix combination parameter value and and therefore yes it's this thing is complicated and dependent on each plugin having good documentation that then gets contributed to this thing so this is a step which generates a build and now each plugin that can contribute to it has some some piece so for instance the clear case ucm baseline parameter value has has that or boolean param yeah so i can understand why their feedback on this page would be but now what are the what are the the, the winner <laughs> yeah yes now what are the uh, the the things the places where they can give feedback to us was this page helpful that opens up the form that takes them to the to the uh, the data entry form for the spreadsheet so this will put data into the spreadsheet and mm -hmm. this should open the sheet to show me okay here it is yeah it does now what we've got instead on pages that are not generated like on let's go to installing Jenkins. So on installing Jenkins at the very bottom, you'll see was this page helpful, but we've also got improve this page and report a problem. And if I click improve this page, it will take me to GitHub and I'm right in the source code of the page. So that's, if you wanna, if you wanna help us improve the page, here's your chance. Now, if I instead click the report a problem, it takes me into GitHub issues. And now I'm ready to report a bug. The reason that the build step does not do that is because in order to fix a bug in the build step page, in order to fix a bug in, in actually any one of these, so, but in the build step page, we had it here. In order to fix a problem in these descriptions, I have to go to the plugin that's contributing each of these sections. So if I wanted to fix package choice parameter value, I have to find the plugin that contributes this, this description and then take you into the missing help file that would tell you what that is. Well, that was a long description for, for the three feedback techniques. Sorry about that. Okay, but stop. I sharing. wonder if at the very least this page should have a brief, inf it's sort of implied that, you know, up at the very top, but to say that this is generated from these. Um, well, but see, my worry is I don't, I wouldn't want to distract the, the reader 
from the this is generated rather the thing that does the generating it would be best if it could create links some somehow inside the page that say go here to fix this page so here's the the link to the plugin on the plugin site and so this tells me which plugin repository is contributing the root description it's the it's just just contributing this right but the tooling iterates over all the plugins and gathers from them the places where they contribute things like deploy metadata parameter value right but this is really a page for experts and up at the top oh, of the page it yeah. does reference them to the the other steps reference page the first one you had right but that's really buried i have to really go looking for that mm -hmm. And well, I'm thinking that a lot of these that want more examples and stuff, it's like, you shouldn't be on this page, you should be on that page. Oh, right, right. I see. Your point is, is that if we could somehow guide them, you're in too deep. You are reading the reference page for a minute technical detail. What you need is this other thing. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. And the information is there. It just doesn't pop out at me. Right. Right, valid. Yeah, good point. And to solve the, the this problem, I like to learn with others projects. So, for example, we have uh, another groups that uh, build documentations that is useful for beginners, and uh, uh, you uh, deeping dive into deep, deeping into and it be more complex. But it, just if you want we not start complex uh, we will not start with complex as samples for example if you saw the website viewify.com uh, you can open it sorry what was the website again it was i will put in the chat oh good all right just a moment it's, it's a good sample of the docs While Jonathan is uh, looking for this, yeah. oh, okay, it is. It's uh, it is it uh, on at the link on chat. Okay, so uh, click and at the button get started. Okay, get oh get started. Get start. Okay, yeah. Uh huh. So it's the documentation page. Uh, that uh, you can use the search uh, bar. For example, I put a, a grid. Grid. You see the suggestions. Click on the first one, please. Now we start to show the basic sample for the more complex one. So, has some links and, and history about them. And uh, more, you can see preview step by steps it's a modern way to show documentations you can uh, show to the user a playground section oh you say there is a there's a playground section on this page yeah yeah ah. for, yeah so for example change the options you can uh, it's responsible yeah the dropbox okay it's a, just a sample. So, for example, uh, we can uh, uh, create uh, a small labs, use uh, Docker, and, and put uh, guide the user to use our containers to, to try uh, our suggest, su su suggestions. Interesting idea. Yeah. 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 You put our images, uh, build the images in Docker Hub, and uh, point the user to there. They and uh, docker pull the images and use our labs just for learn how how things work yeah that 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 looks very interesting 
I, I like I, ideas like that. That's that sounds cool. Yeah, you ain't not uh, uh, reinvented the real, let's say, common term. You can learn with others. Mm -hmm. So, and is is this site a static site, or is this being generated dynamically? Is it possible to do this kind of thing in a static yeah. site? Yeah, it's a stack stacked site. Uh, use a Nux JS, uh, or if you work with React and uh, Next JS, and you can use GIFs or another kinds of interaction with the user. But uh, it takes time to develop it. The developer. Yeah, this this looks like a the this looks like a, a really cool idea. So it looks like we can see their their source code on GitHub yeah. and and uh, you can use the GitHub and uh, uh, each uh, go back to page please come go back. and the first uh, icon uh, that one yeah yeah uh, the next one. Okay. Yeah, you can ah. use another options to to see the code to interact sometimes. And so, what this is providing is some sort of um, online editor that lets yeah. me actually do editing right here live. Yeah. So, if Jenkins has some kind of functionality like this, we can use too. I guess it is similar idea to W three schools. What yeah, the yeah, website. it's similar. Interesting, that's fascinating. And you click on the button of playground, but uh, if you go back on the page and, and, and scroll down some sections, uh, uh, for example, use the, the bar search tool uh, again and uh, find for cards. Yeah, click the first one. Uh, the usage section is another kind of playout. You can uh, roll down, please. So you say the usage section is another is is a yeah. place for playgrounds. Uh, you can see. Ah, okay. Uh, so if I look, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you can use. Uh, can stop. Oh, uh, okay. Each okay, I, that's one. So you can use the GitHub icon to see the code on GitHub, and the last one is to see the code in the same page. Mm, okay, so you just only see if you want. It. So, do you envision that this might be a this kind of technique might allow the 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 reader to then experiment with different different ideas for pipeline execution on on something we're hosting. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's uh, just an idea to work uh, with more options. To offer the, our use more, more, more samples, more interaction, and uh, a modern way to learn about things. For the pipeline stuff, uh, I don't know how you'd make this work, but into the um, oh, the snippet generator, or what's the declarative something or other? Yeah. But those yeah. tools that we already have, you know, this would, if you could, if you're looking at this step to click and see what, because there's a certain amount built into those to help you create the step you want, right? There, there is, but the challenge <laughs> with those is those are truly on a, an executing Jenkins instance. And, and my hunch was that the project is probably not ready to fund an unlimited number of Jenkins instances, even small ones, running for for purposes of, of teaching. So it's true. But but I'm I'm fascinated by the idea. So this really is showing static pages that are highlighting highlighting different capabilities. And then the question is, could we do something similar with static pages for the Jenkins documentation? Interesting. Maybe some intermediate idea, maybe instead of like doing this very uh, uh, significant development efforts, uh, allow users to know how to search within page, because my understanding based on Jonathan's feedback 
that many users don't know how to use Control F for right. the search. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And so a search, putting a search box onto our pages already might be might be very very well received. Yeah, it's uh, uh, the Control F uh, options. Just uh, look in the in that page, not entire documentation. So right. that's the main difference. Uh, the, when we are reading the documentation, we don't know yet in it, wh what page it's that information to look in for it. Mm -hmm. And talking to uh, Mark, your previous page, which you addressed with all, which is generated from all different plugins, in case it is possible to not collapse, but expand all these different steps. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how significant this effort is, and to use Control F, uh, the users will be able to search within this large dynamically generated. Well, and, and to to to, the, to note that the page originally started with everything expanded, oh, and the users the users were were quite vocal that this page is unacceptably long, and and this page is actually a small page compared to if we look at i'm going to terrify everyone now by loading this page the checkout step let's do it in a separate tab because it takes a while um if we load the checkout step uh it's oops let's find the right page steps but it's huge it's it makes it makes the build step look tiny it's so big <laughs> Check out. Check out. Okay, there, there. All right, so here's the general SCM. And, and while we're sitting in this meeting, just wait. We'll, we'll watch, and eventually this will collapse itself. It will collapse itself when the page has finished loading. The page will finish loading two or more megabytes of data into it. So it's, it's in, and you see the list. The list of SCM providers is probably 50% longer than, than the list of build targets. And each of these things has, let's expand this one, has a huge page of more expandable things. So, so absolutely, there's got to be a way to do this better. And Jonathan's idea of, of making it somehow more interactive more searchable, more comfortable, feels like a big win. So, so Jonathan, using that concept from, from Vutify, for instance, seems like they've got shorter pages. Let's, let's leave, let's see, grid. Although they aren't, they aren't terribly short because as I look at them, the scroll bar is, is there's plenty of content about grid there but but then they they allow people to search and find a page focus on the exact thing that they're they're seeking so i might type git scm and find just the git scm page hmm. yeah uh, yeah a lot of projects i use uh, a these templates to out the documentations for example laravel.com uh, it's the other example flutter.com it's another uh, google sample Flutter.com, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, maybe not that Flutter. Google. Oh, okay. <laughs> maybe but, in, in Google you can find the. Ah, oh, I see what you're saying. So I see. So if I do a Google search for Flutter. Beautiful yeah. native, oh, yeah. flutter.dev, okay, got it. Not .dev, probably, not .com, okay. So you see the link docs at the top. You have showcase two, it's another sample. Yeah, that we start to click on the small links to get complex. The API docs, it's another, in the middle of page, the last, options of right uh, oh here we go got API, it okay API, all right so 
the Mac complex sample use, you can use the search I, uh, dots to search bar. And the, oh, search is up here. Yeah. So if I look for import, and there it talks about import or to receive uh, suggestions. There, uh, under the API, there is no installations, but in the previous sections, you can find the installation guide. Okay. Get started, for example. Uh, the middle of the, yeah, get started. So you can choose your operation system. Which, which operating system I am and Bridges, down. Yeah. And so move on and get your information. Hmm. It's different, but use the same uh, um, way, pathway to get your information. It's similar. Excellent, thank you. Yeah. Okay, and I'm gonna stop sharing. So okay. are, there other, are there other topics that either of you would like to address or other topics for discussion? Well, just yes. I wanted to. Sh oh, go ahead. No, uh, please, Vlad, continue. Oh, it's you. Uh, well, thank you, Jonathan, for sharing this. I uh, just I wanted to uh, ask your opinion about doing something general for the entire documentation uh, 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 related to frequently asked questions. We have FAQ for specific sections. But uh, uh, during our discussions online in chat rooms, uh, for instance, Mark is very often answering very interesting questions, providing answers. And um, I thought maybe it makes sense to collect all these different topics, answers, questions, and start creating general FAQ section for entire uh, using of Jenkins overall. And so um, I'm not sure yet how to organize this, but maybe it will start to cover in the entire, all different aspects of using this, this system tool and so on. And, and I think the questions that are asked are, a, are an interesting source of data for us to, to gather and consider what should we put into the material I don't think we would want to become a stack overflow, but I see no reason why we could not mine or gather from good questions from stack overflow and say, hey, look, here are these questions, collect the questions, group, sort, shuffle, categorize them and say, hey, if we had wanted to answer that question on Jenkins.io instead of stack overflow, where would we have put the documentation and let's let's do that because because there are excellent question and answer sites already out there that are impressively populated with jenkins answers if if you look at the the stack overflow uh jenkins tag and the jenkins pipeline tag it's amazing the number of questions that are there and and many times it's a question without an answer or or a question with a dare very deep and involved very very thorough answer so so uh, good good point i'm not sure that faq is the way i would frame it personally i was thinking that it would be more of hey look here are these here are these questions that are asked i think our goal should be to make the answers already be available in jenkins.io so that we could point them to the answer in that page and say here's where it answers this but we would cover this mm -hmm. right and, and and there are plenty of things where we we don't don't yet have an answer right so there are lots of research that would be needed or or lots of find the most interesting the the highest most popular questions on these q a sites like stack overflow and and then from there apply the provide the answer in our documentation that's a good idea mm -hmm. a really good one and do you think, Mark, we should put reference to our site uh, on the site where this question is asked? Like, for instance, in case if question is asked on Stack Overflow, 
we should go in them to Jenkins I.O.? I, I, I think that's perfectly reasonable. Absolutely saying, hey, here's this. One of the, one of the, the, the dreams I had was that the day would come when most answers in the Gitter channels would be links to documentation. We're a long ways away from that right now. We're a very long ways away from that. But many questions come into the Gitter channel, particularly from brand new users, where I just started using Jenkins. And if they're already having to ask a question in Gitter, it may indicate something's missing from the documentation, either in its searchability or its content. Mm -hmm. And Jenkins, okay. mm -hmm. go ahead. Uh, and Mark, uh, what do you suggest to us in the next actions? For example, we share our proposal now. It's uh, open to receive suggestions. Thank you, Vlad. I saw your your corrections there. You send the thank you. Oh, just uh, like, yeah. I reviewed <laughs> and just um, at the end provided simple suggestions about grammar. I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, but uh, in the next week, so what do you suggest we do? Just uh, keep in studying that issues or improve some text? What do you suggest? So for me, I think continue continue contributing to the project so that okay. you get a sense for how does the project work? What are the things that will help it? Uh, you might now because we're we're tending to run out of the initial set of of tickets that we had created for for transformation it may be time to go into the triage page the triage spreadsheet and start looking at those things and doing some triage uh, so check out a, a pay look at a page decide where do i think this might go create a github issue which says transform this page to this location and then you could assign that to yourself or, or put a comment there that says hey, I'm working on this and, and start to work on it. Uh, I, I hope I'll get some time this week to triage a few more pages in so that by the end of the week, we'll have some additional material, but, but, but you could do the triage almost as well as I could, particularly given that you've both had time looking through the documentation. So you've got a sense now of where things are described and where they're not described. So I'd suggest take triage, triage one or two of the existing wiki pages that haven't yet been transformed and, and choose one that's interesting to you and start transforming that by creating a GitHub issue. Then comment on the GitHub issue, I'm working on this, and then start the transformation. Okay. Great. Well, thank you very much. I think we've we've nearly hit our end. If there's any final question before we close this hour out, the next office hours will be Thursday, about eight hours or nine hours prior to this session. So it's Thursday late afternoon European time with Oleg Nanashev. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. See you.